Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's online worship service for this Sunday, April 4th, Resurrection Sunday. I invite you to look at the announcements found on the back of the bulletin. The bulletin can be found at the link in the description under this video on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, You can also go to our website, www.centralprespb.com. Look for the publications link at the top of the webpage. Scroll down until you see today's date. Go ahead and click on that uh, bulletin, I mean, click on today's date, and then you can download the PDF for the bulletin on your mobile device, tablet, or you can print that out so you can follow along with today's worship service. Uh, Now for today's announcements. Uh, The session of CPC has decided to stick with virtual services for the foreseeable future. Uh, keep in contact us with keep in contact with us via social media, username Central Press PB, or on our website for announcements about any special services and when we plan to resume in-person worship. Archives of our online services can be found on Facebook and on YouTube. Links to each can be found on our website as well, uh, centralpresspb.com. Also, uh, today is uh, we're going to be taking up the offering for the uh, one great hour of sharing. Uh, We will have more information about that uh, later in today's worship service. Uh, Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship the Lord. This is the good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. This is the good news. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never put it out. Alleluia. Christ is risen. This is the good news. Once we were no people, but now we are God's people. Alleluia. Christ is risen. This is the good news. Christ is our peace. The indestructible peace we now share with each other. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence. In faith and penitence, let us confess our sins before God and one another, first in unison, using the prayer printed in the bulletin, and then silently. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We overlook the poor and the hungry and pass by those who mourn. We are deaf to the cries of the oppressed and indifferent to calls for peace. We despise the weak and abuse the earth you made. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust your power to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the joy of life abundant given in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. And now silently. Amen. The good news in Christ is that when we face ourselves in God with the awareness of our need, we are given grace to grow, encouraged to continue the journey. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Now let's turn it over to Rose Von Tunglin for this week's children's sermon. On Sunday. Oh. Okay. And how many of you know what happened on Palm Sunday? Did anybody tell me what happened? Um, Jesus rode on a donkey. That's what he did. Why did he ride? What did he do? Okay. Here's the story. Today is Palm Sunday. Jesus, let's see. Let me give somebody this one. Okay. Jesus was riding was with his disciples and they had been out preaching and teaching and they came up coming close to Jerusalem and Jesus told one of his or a couple of his disciples to go into town and when they got there they would find a donkey. The donkey would be tied up somewhere, I guess on a post or something, and the donkey had never been ridden before to untie him and bring him the donkey Well, and if anybody asks you why you're untying the donkey, tell me. Because Jesus needs it. Right? So the two disciples go into town and they find the donkey tied up like Jesus told them. And he takes the donkey, they start to leave out before the city gates. And somebody says, hey, 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 where are you going with my donkey? And they said, the Lord needs you. Donkey out, they put the totes on the donkey so Jesus would have a little comfort back there to sit on. 
Hosanna. Hosanna. That's right. Hosanna. And then all the people that were in town got palm branches and started waving them. And they were shouting, Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. And what does Hosanna mean? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to praise the Lord. This is what we call Holy Week. And there are events that happen during Holy Week. You see, if I can tell me what happened maybe like on the Thursday after Palm Sunday. What did Jesus do? Jesus had all his disciples go to a room and what did they do? They had a meal. That's right. And what do we call that meal? Now, what do we call that meal now? Y'all remember, guys, the Lord's what Supper. Do do? Every the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper or the Last Supper. This was the Last Supper Jesus had with his disciples. And he broke bread and he poured wine and he told them to remember the Lord's Supper. And they said, Lord, remember us. Remember us. And they said, Lord, 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 remember us. And Remember Langston? They come and arrest Jesus, don't they? And, and then they take Jesus into the town. And on Friday night, they crucify Jesus. And guess what, though? On Sunday morning, what happened? He, he, he came, came back, back alive. alive. He arose. He arose. He Christ is risen. And that's what we're celebrating this past this coming week. We celebrate it every day, actually. We can celebrate Christ every day. But... Sometimes we forget, sometimes we kind of let it sidestep, but especially during this time of the year, we want to remember to give God all the glory and all the thanks for He has done. This week's Minute for Mission is the One Great Hour of Sharing offering. It provides assistance for Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, the Presbyterian Hunger Program, and the self-development of people. Uh, we're going to go ahead and throw it over to a video provided by the PCUSA, which talks about one great hour of sharing. In Isaiah 58, God issues a call and a challenge to become repairers of the breach, to look beyond our own doors and share what we have with those in need. Presbyterians worldwide join in sharing God's love with our neighbors in need around the world by providing relief from natural disasters, food for the hungry, and support for the poor and oppressed through their gifts to One Great Hour of Sharing. Haiti is one such place. In 2010, Haiti was devastated by an earthquake which has taken years to overcome. Few understand this as well as Andral Estes. He lost his home and his career in Port-au-Prince. Thanks to One Great Hour of Sharing, he now farms on the Central Plateau and works with his neighbors to build a new life. Andral lives in an eco-village designed to be completely sustainable. Their Presbyterian Church partners worked with the residents to build their community and secure livelihoods for their future. Education for the children became the next priority. With new skills and resources, residents of the eco-village could afford school fees and uniforms. Individual Presbyterian churches helped them build the school. Through one great hour of sharing, Presbyterians across the United States help make new lives possible for those like Andral, those whose lives have been turned upside down at home and abroad. Comment tu as senti au soupat bien, soupat à l'école? Je me sens mal à l'aise parce que je ne suis pas capable de connaître. Qui sont tes amis venus là grandi? Infirmière. Ça que faut tes amis venus infirmière là grandi. Donc à aider les peuples. Yes, to help the people, to answer God's call to be repairers of the breach. With your gifts to one great hour of sharing, lives are changed and hope is restored. Thank you for your generosity. For when we all do a little, it adds up to a lot. Again, we appreciate the PCUSA providing that video. 
if you would like, you can make your donation through uh, a text. You can text the word OGHS to the number 91999 to give. You can also uh, donate by credit card online at presbyterianmission.org forward slash G-I-V-E dash O-G-H-S. Or you can mail a check here to the, uh, to the uh, church. Again, make sure to put uh, one great hour of sharing on the memo line. Now we're going to go ahead and turn it over to Reverend Tim Rees for this week's sermon. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the 25th chapter of the book of Isaiah, beginning with verse 6 and proceeding through verse 9. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Our second reading this morning comes from the 15th chapter of Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, beginning with verse 1 and proceeding through verse 11. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. Now I should remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, though, or, or through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ had died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of him, whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God... I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. And finally, from the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to Mark, beginning with verse 1 and proceeding through verse 8. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. 
But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, so that as your word is proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear. That hearing we might believe, and that believing we might live lives of richer and fuller service, glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. Even with the good news that so many people have already started to receive the COVID-19 vaccine, we still face a pandemic. And as we worship this morning, there are once again potential hotspots seeing rises in cases. And so as we gather for worship, we are very much aware that a shroud of death still envelops many different places and us as a people. You know it. I know it. The people of God have always known it. Perhaps that is why the psalmist would write, I am weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with my weeping. My eyes waste away because of grief. They grow weak because of all my foes. Maybe those words were running through the minds of the women as they trudged to the tomb where Jesus' body lay on that first Easter morning. Maybe such words were running through the mind of the prophet Isaiah as he looked forward to a day when God would destroy on Mount Zion the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations and would swallow up death forever. And I was captivated by that rather evocative image of God swallowing up death forever, in part because of something that biblical theologian Walter Brueggemann wrote about that passage, saying that the image there is God swallowing death like a great sea monster attacking a smaller fish. God will attack this marauding beast and take it in the jaws, crush it, chew it, reduce it, eliminate it, and then perhaps spit it out. A shroud of death envelops us. You know it, I know it, the people of God have always known it, which is precisely why we celebrate this day and why we sing our Alleluia's. Because on Good Friday, Jesus hung on Calvary's cross with the weight of the world on his shoulders. His body torn, his flesh mangled and mutilated, death entering his lungs with every labored breath. He endured a hell on earth, the likes of which we can only imagine. Bitter wine, blood, sweat, tears, all mingled in his throat, even as he cried out in anguish, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then came the cold, dark tomb. 
but the grave could not contain him. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. But just as we are about to announce, and they lived happily ever after, we are confront, confronted with the account of that first Easter in Mark's gospel. And perhaps we are left a bit flat, maybe even disappointed. Perhaps even with a nagging suspicion that a terrible joke has been played on us. Because Mark's version of the resurrection does not end the way we think it ought to. He tells us they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. Huh? That's it? No resurrection appearances, no joyful announcements, no happily ever after. Truth be told, several ancient versions of the Gospel of Mark were not very happy with the way Mark ended the Gospel either. And so they sought to resolve that problem by adding another ending. We have those verses printed in our Bibles today, but the most ancient manuscripts, the oldest manuscripts of Mark's gospel end with verse 8. And its announcement that the women fled in terror and amazement and said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Matthew and Luke were less than thrilled with this particular ending. Matthew tells us that Jesus would later meet his disciples on a mountain and give them the Great Commission. Luke tells us of a dramatic encounter two disciples have with the risen Lord on their walk to Emmaus. And obviously, at some point, these women in Mark got over their fear and did indeed tell others who told someone else, who then in turn told someone else, and who in turn told someone else. On and on it would go. How do I know? Because some four decades after the fact, Mark sat down to write his gospel. And someone had obviously told him the good news. Then, of course, there is Paul's own testimony where he wrote to the Corinthian Christians, I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Someone had shared the good news with someone else who shared it with Paul. And then he shared it with others. Nearly 2,000 years after the fact, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord because someone shared that good news with us. So, why would Mark choose to leave us on what might be considered a cliffhanger? I think we actually find a clue to that very reason in the very first verse of Mark's gospel. There we read the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And from that very simple opening, Mark goes on to tell the story of Jesus, who talked about God in ways that amaze people, who possessed the power to make people whole, who exhibited in word and action the reign of God in the people's midst. And at the same time, Mark tells the story about how Jesus' actions and teachings 
brought him into conflict with the powers that be, a conflict that ultimately led to Jesus' death. And then he tells us that some women come to the tomb, and just when they think the story is going to end on a high note, they run away in fear. The gospel has a beginning. Mark told us so. What it does not have is a definite conclusion. So many are left dissatisfied. We picture the women running away and want to shout, but the story can't end there in silence and in fear. There's got to be more to the story than this. And the moment we say that, God says, exactly. Because what I believe Mark is telling us in this story is that Jesus' resurrection is not a story about them living happily ever after. It's a story that does not end because now it is your story and my story. It does not end because it is not over. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And the power of God is at work now inviting women, men, and children to be transformed by God's gift of abundant life. God has swallowed up death forever, and we are given the wondrous opportunity to spread that good news, which, plain and simple, is the message of Easter. Oh, sometimes we get caught up in the, what we think are the deeper meanings of Easter. But we fail in such times to see the obvious truth in front of us. It's easy for us to get caught up in disputes that try to prove this or that about the resurrection. But the resurrection is not about proof. It's about faith. And in a world of doubt and despair, there can be no greater gift than the peace and hope which come from such faith. We have been given a great opportunity to take part in our Lord's ongoing story of liberation and reconciliation. The good news cannot be confined to a moment in the past, nor is it simply about hope for some distant future. The news that Christ is risen and is offering each and every one of us a new life is good news worth sharing in every place and time. So on Easter morning, according to Mark, it's not a time to be running over to where we think Jesus is and sitting down with him for coffee and conversation. It's not about throwing a party. It's about seeking our Lord who is in motion. And it is about our being in motion too. On the night of his arrest, Jesus told his disciples that after he had been raised up, he would go ahead of them to Galilee. And the young man who meets the women at the tomb tells them the same thing. Remember, it was in Galilee that Jesus first announced the good news that the kingdom of God had come near. So by returning to Galilee to meet his disciples, Jesus is pointing them and us to a new beginning. He takes us back to where it all began and said, now, Embrace the good news of the kingdom of God and its drawing near. And tell this world filled with despair, enshrouded by death, that there is resurrection and new life. Jesus was not there at the tomb that day because he knew there was still work to do. A dying world in need of renewing grace, which only the resurrected Christ could give, was waiting. 
Jesus could not and would not hang out at a tomb that he no longer needed just to greet his friends and have a little celebration. He had good news to share. He had new life to give. He had to go on ahead of his disciples. And that's where we find him today, out ahead of us, where there is need for charity and love to prevail over injustice and violence, where there is a need for compassion and hope to replace cynicism and despair, where there is a need for peace and joy to take root in lives that are empty and lost, where humanity needs to discover the true meaning of justice and dignity. There we find the risen Christ beckoning us. Why? so that we might have the opportunity to share the good news with others and thereby invite them to share in the never-ending story of God's great love. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember that I am with you always to the end of the age. Hear also these words from Holy Scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you are called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus Christ and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us <clears throat> and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptisms as we celebrate this sacrament. On behalf of the session of Central Presbyterian Church, I present Mia Elvia Mendoza, daughter of Brianna Rodriguez and Israel Mendoza, to receive the sacrament of baptism. Brianna and Israel, I ask you, do you desire that Mia be baptized? Yes. Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to your child? Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Mia by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging her to know, the, know and follow Jesus Christ and to be a faithful member of his church? Amen. Through baptism, we enter the covenant God has established. Within this covenant, God gives us new life, guards us from evil, and nurtures us in love. In embracing that covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. Israel and Brianna, as God embraces you within the covenant, I ask you to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn away from sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Will you be God, uh, Christ's faithful disciples, obeying his word and showing his love? Okay. With the whole church, will you join us as we profess our faith in God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the freedom of the promised land. And in the waters of Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism, for in it we are buried with Christ in his death. From it we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Send your spirit to move over this water, that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it, and raise Mia to new life, grafting her to the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon her, that, the, that she may have power to do your will, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God be all praise, honor, and glory, now and forever. Amen. Mia, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, uphold Mia by your Holy Spirit. Give her the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, now and forevermore. Amen. Mia has been received into the one holy Catholic church through baptism. God has made her a member of the household and family of God to share with us <clears throat> in the priesthood of Christ. Let us welcome her with joy and thanksgiving. We welcome you into Christ's church to share with us in his ministry, for we are all one in Christ. Amen. Brianna and Gabriel, who mark the occasion of Mia's baptism and welcoming to God's household and family, we present you with this white robe, the color of purity, Let us now return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and offerings. This week, our, our tithes and offerings will be taken up electronically. Head to our website, www.centralprespb.com. Look for the Donate Now link, and you can provide your tithe uh, with a debit or credit card. Or if you prefer, you can mail your uh, tithe in with a check or money order to 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 
71603. If you're making a donation to the One Great Hour of Sharing, please notate on the memo line whether this is your regular tithe or for One Great Hour of Sharing. Let us pray. <clears throat> it is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, who rose for us, who reigns in power for us, and who indeed prays for us. And we give you thanks and praise, eternal God, for your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. And so, in our great gratitude, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, indeed, our very selves for us to use as, or for you to use as you see fit until that most glorious day when at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend and every tongue shall confess him, Lord, to your honor and glory. Amen. At this time, let us share our joints concerns, which there are several. Um, we want to go ahead and keep uh, Brad Von Tunglin in our prayers. Uh, this week, he was admitted into the uh, uh, JRMC with issues for, um, uh, he's, he's got ammonia in his blood, uh, resulting from a um, bacterial infection in his body, um, but he is doing um, doing some better. Uh, uh, we got a report from Rose this afternoon, uh, or yesterday afternoon, I should say, and uh, he is uh, he is improving. Uh, we want to continue to send up prayers for Miss Claire Hammonds, who is uh, still under hospice care. Um, we also want to lift up the families who are grieving the loss of a loved one uh, during these uh, this holiday season. Um, I know this time can be especially difficult for those who have lost uh, loved ones recently. Um, we want to continue to um, continue to pray for Dominic, uh, who is still uh, recovering from his recent uh, surgeries. And uh, we also want to continue to pray for uh, those who uh, contracted COVID-19, uh, those who are um, those who uh, who are on the front lines, uh, those who are having to deal with COVID-19. Um, on a daily basis, our retail workers and such. And uh, we also want to pray, continue to pray for the reconciliation of our world to God's will. Let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. Please be with Ms. Hammonds, uh, please be with Dominic, please be with Brad, and please be, be with all those who are dealing with medical issues currently. Uh, we continue to ask that you be with all those who have lost loved ones to COVID-19 and those who have lost loved ones heading into uh, this Easter season. Uh, please be with those who are dealing on the front lines of COVID-19, our medical uh, people, our first responders, and uh, those who are retail workers and people who are dealing with um, with the effects of the, uh, the, 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 the getting rid of the mask mandate, uh, we pray that the variants do not spread quickly and that we, uh, that we come to a, a point soon where we can resume our normal lives. We also pray for your reconciliation of our, our nation and our world to your will. We ask for all of these things in Jesus' name. Give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Go out into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing always in the power and presence of God's Holy Spirit, remembering that this day is not about happily ever after, but only the good news. 
being spread at its beginning for a world desperately in need of such news. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.